welcome back. I'm Roger Ramsey, the executive chef instructor of the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center, Culinary Pathway. I uh, appreciate y'all stopping to visit with us again, EC3 Really Cooks. Uh, today, we're gonna do a, we'll do a little Cajun and Creole dishes. Uh, difference between Cajun and Creole, the way it's been explained to me, Cajun, you're looking more of the countryside, the, the big bold flavors, and Creole's more of the city and refined flavors. Um, what's on our menu for today? We're gonna make a little jambalaya. We're gonna put some chicken and sausage in it, uh, some red beans and rice, cause what, I like beans. Um, we're gonna make chicken etouffee. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. And then we're gonna make some, some po' boy sandwiches. So that, that's kind of what's on the plan. If you notice that in front of me here, there is a basket of vegetables. We've got some onions, some celery, and some bell pepper. Most cuisines will have some type of season of vegetable that they'll use. Uh, for the Cajun and the Creole, it's referred to as the Trinity, and it is this basket of vegetables. Um, classic French cuisine, use mirepoix which is exactly the same minus the bell pepper and add in some celery. Uh, Mediterranean, Latinos, and Portuguese alike, they'll use a Frito, uh, which is also a mixture of onions, different type of peppers, a few other odds and ends, and it's generally cooked. Might even have some ham put into it. But today, this is what we're using. Now, we came in this morning to get ready to do the show. Mr. Bobby was busy. And, uh, well, y'all have seen us cut a lot of vegetables, so I didn't want to show y'all that today. And I didn't really want to cut today, so I kind of took a shortcut. If you're at the house, you're in a hurry, there's nothing wrong with technology. We cut our vegetables in a good old-fashioned food processor today. This one is a RoboCo. That's a brand name. It's industrial, it's commercial, it's expensive. The one I have at the house is a Cuisinart. Not terribly expensive. You can buy them cheap. It's a great labor saver. You just have to learn how to use it. If you turn this on, whatever you put into it, you turn on, leave it go, it's going to turn it to liquid. It's a very violent cooking method, or a cutting method. But it has a little pulse button. You use that pulse, you can make nice small cuts without tearing up your food terribly. So if you don't have one, you like to cook at the house, you want to save yourself a minute or two of labor, See if you can't find one. You can generally find them in a secondhand shop. That's where mine came from. So, folks, we're going to get things moved around a little bit, get Mr. Bobby over here. We're going to start our meal for today. Today we're doing Cajun and Creole. We're talking all about the Trinity. Thank you much. Welcome back to EC3 Cooks. We are here today. It's Cajun Day. This is one of my favorite dishes. This is a jambalaya dish. Uh, we're going to have some chicken in it, some sausage, a lot of different types of vegetables. We're going to add some spice to it. And again, this is not a difficult uh, recipe to follow or to make. Uh, we're going to start with our five quart pot. I've already put some oil in it. That will heat that up pretty quickly. And once we have this heated up, we're going to add in our chicken and our sausage. We'll do the chicken first for a lot of it. The, the sausage has already been pre-cooked. It does not take a long time to cook that. If you had raw sausage, yes, add it in when you add in the chicken and it can, uh, all of it can kind of brown together. Oil is hot. You can tell if your oil is hot if you put your hand about four or five inches above it. And if you can't keep it there uh, for longer than about five seconds, it's hot enough. So as we Throw it in, you hear the sizzle, which is what we're looking for. We're gonna spread it out. And one of the things we really like to do is we like to season as we go. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. What you're looking to do on the, on the chicken, now we've chunked it all up, so it will actually cook a lot faster. Um, if you have a full chicken breast, it just takes longer because the chicken's a lot thicker at that point. So every few minutes we'll stir that around, make sure nothing's sticking. As we talked about earlier, um, the Trinity, which is what we will use most of the time today, 
is two parts onion, one part bell pepper, one part celery. Uh, it's different than the mirepoix that we use in a lot of our other dishes, which that is two parts onion, one part celery, and then one part carrots. Again, if you've already cut up your chicken into chunks, it does cook a lot faster. So we're about halfway through the cooking process now, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in our sausage. You can add in, this is just smoked sausage. You can add in an andouille sausage, which has a lot of Cajun spices already in it. If you do that, you don't need as much Cajun spice later uh, in the cooking process because the, that sausage will actually release all of its flavoring as it is cooked. Um, the same is true if you add it into a soup of some sort. You don't have to add a lot of extra flavoring because it will come from that sausage. Um, and Dewey sausage is one of my favorites. I love spicy food, but it's a, uh, for some people, it's a little too spicy. Add a little bit more salt and pepper. Now what we're trying to do is brown this meat. And the important thing on chicken is to make sure that you do cook it through. Uh, you're looking for a temperature of 165. We do that typically on a chicken breast or a chicken thigh, something like that when it's cut up into pieces. We're just looking for all sides to kind of be browned up and we know that it's fully cooked at that point. Other ingredients we'll be using today, we have chicken stock that we will use. We have rice that will go in near the end of this. Um, the other great thing about this dish, actually you use this pot only. So it's not, we're not gonna trans uh, transfer this to another dish. We're not gonna put it into another pan. We actually will cook it all in this one pot. Typically you would do this in a Dutch oven, uh, which is, um, most of them are ceramic coated, but it holds heat incredibly well. Um, putting the top on it's very heavy. Uh, and so that is a typical way to make uh, jambalaya. We can do it here in our pots just as well. Just a few more minutes and we'll have all of this chicken and sausage cooked up. You can use your own seasonings, you can make up a, a Cajun seasoning that has some cayenne pepper in it, uh, onion powder, granulated garlic. Uh, you can mix in some Italian spices as well. There's a, anything you wanna do to add to it. That's the greatest part about cooking and what we get to do. Uh, and I love on the cooking side because I can throw in things. If I want it spicier, I have something to throw in. If I want it uh, to dull it out a little bit, maybe I add some cream or add uh, something else to that uh, that kind of flattens it a little bit more. Um, now, if you go on to our bake shop side, you have to follow all the instructions exactly. All of those measurements uh, and ingredients have to be the exact right way uh, or your product won't come out. That's right, we have some students every year we make biscuits and they end up looking like hockey pucks because they didn't add the right ingredients at the right time or add quite enough. So our chicken and sausage mixture is finished. We're actually gonna roll it out onto, pour it out on our, just, we're just gonna let it dry here. Some of the juices go away from it. And now we're gonna start in with our vegetables. So we're gonna do our onions, green pepper, and celery. And there is a lot of water in these three items, especially onions. Simply gonna add this, and this is gonna sweat it down. What you will see is the onions will start to turn clear, very white right now, um, and they'll start to turn um, almost transparent. We're also gonna add in some minced garlic. And we're also gonna throw in Bay leaves, uh, the one thing I'll tell you about bay leaves, it's not a prize if you get this on your plate. Uh, so don't think that you won something. These do not taste good, but they have incredible flavor in them. And because of that, we do use them quite a bit. But remember, don't do this. We do a crab boil and we have a lot of other things that we do uh, that we use bay leaves in. Do not use that uh, or do not eat that. It's, it doesn't taste good at all. Um, we're also gonna add in some Creole seasoning along with some thyme and oregano. 
just some Italian seasoning that we have. Put in a little bit of our Cajun seasoning. We'll give this a stir. This will probably take four or five minutes to get it all kind of sweated down. Rice is a big uh, part of the Cajun Creole uh, cooking experience. They do a lot of things with it. Um, it's, it's really great in the fact that you can incorporate it into a lot of different meals. We can have, we did braised chicken thighs. We could have rice with that. You can do, obviously, what we're doing today, jambalaya. We'll, we'll do a red beans and rice dish. Rice is very good. One, that it can fill you up. Uh, two, it's not very expensive. Um, and there's a lot of applications for it as well. So we'll have this before too long, we'll put this in. And as you can see, we're starting to turn the onions from a white to kind of opaque, almost a clear. And again, I. I always say this on the show, I wish we had smell-o-vision that you could smell this and uh, how good it smells. The advantage for us is our staff here behind the cameras along with Chef and some of our staff here at EC3, we actually get to eat it all after it's done. We also do some of this during the, the regular school year for our students that are out there watching or parents of students that are thinking about sending or a student that might want to be interested in the culinary program. This isn't like an unusual thing that we would only do one time during the year. This is something that we'll have a couple of different Cajun days during a trimester that they might try out. All right, everything seems to be about right. We need three cups of chicken stock. We're gonna add in our tomatoes. And then we're gonna add back in our sausage and chicken. One of the things when you're cooking this, there's a lot of hurry up and then wait time. Um, that's just kind of the way that it is when we do this type of cooking. So we're gonna, we'll step away here for a minute. This has to cook for about 30 minutes. We'll get it to a, uh, a simmer, which a simmer is uh, right before a boil. We will want to bring this up to a boil, so I'm going to turn the heat back up. And one of the things you have to remember when you use our pots is they get really, really hot. Have a hot pad ready. I forget that when I'm here. Our pots are actually metal, or the handle is metal and it retains quite a bit of the heat. So we've got it to a simmer now, and I don't think I can get the camera angle to where you can see it. It's just barely bubbling up. It's usually bubbling up around the outside part of the, um, outside part of the pot. So I've got it to that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our rice for the entire, two cups of rice in. We're gonna stir it around. Once it comes back to a, a simmer, we'll put a, a hat on it and we will let it go for about 30 minutes. And when we come back, we will show you the finished product of our sausage and chicken jambalaya. Well, folks, Mr. Bobby's jambalaya is back on the stove top, simmering away. It's probably gonna be 30, 45 minutes or so. Uh, Mr. Bobby made mention about using a Dutch oven. I understand most of what we're doing here is country cooking, and this is something they're going to put on early in the day and let cook all day long. And that cast iron or the porcelain for a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet holds heat really well and less likely to burn because it's going to be set on the back of the stove somewhere and it's just going to let it do its thing during the day. Uh, I'm going to start with some little red beans and rice. Uh, my recipe couldn't be a whole bunch easier. It'll be attached at the end of the show because uh, we're going to use Mrs. Kroger's beans. You can buy them right there off the shelf. They're just sitting there waiting on you. You don't have to soak them overnight. You don't, we're not doing that. We're going to use canned beans. We're going to start just a little bit of oil and some bacon. Okay, 
Anytime you're going to saute, you're going to fry, pan fry, always make sure your pan's hot first. If it doesn't make that sound, you're not quite doing it right. To render out a little bit of that fat, we're not really looking at crisping it up. We don't want to change the texture for our beans a whole bunch. Just kind of render the fat down, cook it just a little bit. Then we're going to go in with our sausage. Uh, ideally, you would use probably uh, an andouille sausage. This has to be kielbasa. It's still all pork. If you don't like pork, you can get beef sausage. If you try to cut back on fat, you can get turkey sausage. Be careful about the turkey sausage, though, because sometimes there's a lot of skin put into it. It's not going to change the fat impact much for you. So we've got our bacon in. We've got our sausage in. The reason we're cooking the meats first, next we'll go in our trinity. The reason we're cooking the meats first, we want to render out that smoky goodness. We need that fat to add to our beans, otherwise we just have beans. We want to be something nice. Our trinity vegetables we've been talking about all morning, so the bell pepper, celery, and onion. This is what we've got so far. Doesn't look like much. As Mr. Bobby explained, we've got to cook those vegetables down, get those tender, uh, particularly the onion. It's gonna turn kind of translucent. Uh, go from that bright white to a nice soft glowing color. Uh, and get the peppers and the celery cooked down and tender. That's gonna take just a minute. Now we're gonna add some garlic to this dish, but we don't wanna put it in just yet. Uh, reason for that, garlic will burn easily, okay? The peppers, the onion, the celery, fairly sturdy, the garlic will burn much more easily. And if you've ever had a dish with burnt garlic, you know never ever put the garlic in too soon. It's extremely bitter, it's sharp, there it's not good eats. Nothing good about that. I think we're okay now. Our garlic. Add a little bit of herbs. Uh, Creole and Cajun dishes both uh, use quite a bit of herbs, particularly oregano, a little bit of basil, um, thyme. America is built on the melting pot theory. And if there's any place where that's demonstrated best in the United States, it's in South Louisiana. Uh, you know, you had the folks coming. Uh, the French actually coming from Acadia, Nova Scotia, they, they weren't getting along with the powers to be there, so they sailed south, um, made it all the way to the Gulf, uh, started settling in the, the southern parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. Those are the folks that are known referred to as the Cajuns. Uh, and they took up with the indigenous people and the slaves that were brought in and the, the European explorers. And, uh, Everybody got along in that part of the world. If there, it is the premier example of that melting pot theory that, that we all want to see take place in our country. This is the fun part, wearing a white jacket. Now, so far we've got our bacon rendered down. We've got our smoked sausage, has to be kibasa in this one. Our trinity vegetables, our garlic, and our herbs. Now we need to put in our tomatoes. And these are whole tomatoes, because there it is. This is the fun part, you just kind of squish it and put it in there. A lot of folks will tell you they don't care for Cajun or Creole dishes because it's all spicy. It doesn't have to be, and if it's refined, it doesn't need to be. Um, I think the folks that, that go out of their way to make food overly spicy, or they're, they're probably having a hard time building flavors in any other fashion. Uh, I feel the same way about folks who make food overly salty. Uh, if they make it sweet, if they make it too fatty. All those reasons, because fat, sugar, salt are all shortcuts to flavor. Take the long road, 
make it something nice. And then, and then, in with our Mrs. Kroger's beans. Now, you don't have to use Mrs. Kroger's beans. You can use whatever kind of beans you want. You can soak your beans overnight if you wish. Not a thing wrong with that. I've just got other things I need to get done. So we're going to use Mrs. Kroger's. Sam Walton's up there at Walmart. They'll work okay too. The Audi store. Theirs will work. And as I said, this is the easy red beans and rice recipe because that's pretty much that. Um, we've got our meats in there. We've got them rendered down, so we've got the smoky fat. We've got our vegetables in there, they're sweated out. We've got our beans in there that's already pretty much cooked. Uh, then we're gonna cook them till they're tender, and then we're gonna make them creamy. More about that in a little bit. But I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute and follow up on something Mr. Bobby was talking about. Mr. Bobby made mention about rice. And if you think about it, in the grand scheme of things, there aren't many, if any, cultures that don't eat rice. Uh, in one fashion or another. Okay, I dig risotto, the Italian rice. I like basmati rice from the Middle East, jasmine rice, aged with jasmine flowers, um, plain old white rice that we eat here, uh, sushi rice. I mean, I, do, I dig rice. A lot of folks don't understand how to cook it. So, it's quite, quite simple. You just need to know a couple things. If you're cooking regular long grain white rice, you need to know two equals one, okay? Two, e two equals one. That is two parts of liquid. We're gonna use plain old water. You can use chicken stock, uh, whatever type of stock you want, but two parts of liquid to one part of rice. So in this pot is nothing more than two cups of water and about half a teaspoon of salt. We have to bring this water to a boil. Then we're gonna add our one cup of rice, two and one. You bring it back to a boil, throw a lid on it. If you don't have a lid, use a little aluminum foil. Turn the heat back down, let it simmer, ride it out about 15 minutes or so. Once you can no longer see the water on top of the rice, Turn the heat off all together, just let it set for 10 minutes. And that's the basic recipe for plain white rice. What we know is steamed rice. There are a couple other ways to make rice. This is probably the most common, most popular. Uh, but that, that's it. it, involves two parts of water, one part of rice, and enough salt to make it taste good. So folks, you know, the only point sitting here watch me watch, wait for water to boil. When it boils, the rice goes in, it comes back to a boil and gets simmered. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to take my beans, get them back on the hob so they can finish riding out. They're going to be a few minutes, and we're going to move right along with the show. Folks, our red beans and rice are back on the hop. They're simmering away. Uh, Mr. Bobby's etouffee said back there. I'm sorry, jambalaya said back there. I'm making etouffee. A little more involved than what we've done so far. Still, easy peasy. What we have here is a pot with some hot oil in it. Remember, if you pan fry it, always heat your metal up first, add your oil, and then heat your oil. What we're putting in there are just plain old chicken breasts. We cut it down into little fillets. Put a little salt and pepper on it in the bowl. And we just need to get some brown to them. Get them cooked through. Turn the heat down a little bit. A word about frying. If you're frying something, whether it's our little chicken breasts, eggs, steaks, whatever it may be, if you go to turn it and it sticks to the pan, it's telling you it's not ready to be turned. Okay, as it heats up, it will actually lift the proteins up off that metal and you can turn it. If you have to fight with it and break it apart, it's just not ready yet. Now, when you get them in there, leave them alone. I started messing about with those too soon. 
Leave them alone. If you go flipping it and flopping it and mussing about, you're never going to get caramelization. We want it to be pretty. We want to build some flavors. That darkening to marble process, that's what we're talking about. Folks, if you notice our little butane burner, it's the same thing you would use to go camping with. Uh, we bought them when I was teaching here the first time because we were going to a competition called Pro Start. Pro Start is a, a Pro Start curriculum. Uh, it's a fine dining experience where the kids have to plan the three course meal, prepare that meal in front of judges, and then serve that meal. Uh, the judging criteria is everything from having a, a, a shopping list, a packing list, uh, the recipes in themselves as well as the execution is quite involved. Um, first time out we were third in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I don't think that was too bad. But they have everything there for you to use except for heat. So this is what they had for you to cook on. You got two of these little butane burners. Since we were going to go to this competition, we need a little practice on them. We bought a number of them and they're just dandy. So now we use them when we do demos as well as. We bought the little burners for the competition. Uh, we found out we could do demos with them. Um, stay right here in front of all the kids and say how to drag them around in front of maybe a six burner or something. So that's worked out really well for us. Now, I may mentioned that this dish is called etouffee. Ah, too fat. Uh, which simply means smothered. So what we're going to do after our chicken's browned off, we're going to build in the same pot a gravy of sorts, a vegetable gravy. It's going to be based with the Trinity vegetables, have a little bit of tomato in it, a little chicken stock, some herbage, and then it all goes back together so that gravy will be on top of our chicken. Hence, smothered. Generally, you can serve it with rice. A big honking piece of French bread would work nice too. Some noodles might even work. Traditionally, it's done with, served with rice. Hot pan says the brown drippings from the chicken. That has a technical term. It's called fond, F-O-N-D. It's it's a lot of flavor. You don't scrape that out. You want to keep it. And when we put our cold vegetables in there. It's going to start taking that fond loose, put it back into the, into the recipe. Okay. A word about tools. You can't do this with a rubber spatula. If you see one with a red handle, it's silicone. The difference in silicone and rubber is the rubber can't handle the heat. It'll melt. Silicone, on the other hand, I think you get up to about 400 degrees or so. See where the fawns picked up, been picked up by the vegetables? Put the flavor back into the dish instead of into the pan. If you see a recipe that mentions deglazing, whether it's with stock or wine, doesn't matter. Deglazing is still that process of getting that fawn to release from the pan back into the dish. So there's that and that. Now we need to add a little butter. That's about a stick of butter, I think it was. I'm sorry, half a stick, four ounces, not eight. As Mr. Bobby and I, since we've been doing this show often, talk about ruse, we're halfway there. This is the other half. Fat and flour. Fat and flour is what makes a roux. We're using mostly butter, a little chicken fat, touch of cooking oil. And we put it right on top of those vegetables. They're going to keep cooking as we go. It's going to take a minute because we have to brown that roux. Need to get a little color on it. You can see the roux taken out. It's not it's not stark white anymore. 
It's a little past blonde, not quite brown. We're gonna give it just a little more time. That's T-I-M-E, not T-H-Y-M-E. There's no time in there. Just never mind. We're at a couple cups of chicken stock. Now for my astute students, yes, that is the wrong measure cup to use to measure liquids, but it's what I had handy. Little salt and pepper, bring it to boil. Add our garlic, it didn't go in earlier because we did want to burn it. It's nice and safe now. Turn that heat way down. Now, we need a couple of tomatoes or tomato paste. This is the fun part. Like I said earlier, you get to squish it. Get tomatoes all over your nice shiny white jacket. And we need a little herbs and spices. What we've got? See, we need a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. We need half a teaspoon of paprika. And we need one and a half teaspoons of mustard powder. Wrong side. The chicken is cooked three. It's cooked to temperature. All right, it's safe to eat. But what we're gonna do, I don't like the looks that way, just a little more stock, loosen it up just a bit. Much more better. So our chicken's cooked to temperature. It's safe to eat. But what we're gonna do is add it back to our gravy and let it ride. 15, 20 minutes and let it cook to tender. See, there's a difference between the temperature and the tender. So, we've got the temperature done. Now we're gonna make it to tender. So folks, bear with me. This is gonna go back on the hop with everything else and let it finish up. Uh, I think Mr. Bobby's going to put together some sandwiches here in just a minute. So let me get rid of this, clean up my mess, and he's going to come make a new mess. Welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. Today is our Cajun day, and uh, we've gotten to the point where we're going to make our po' boy sandwiches. Uh, but one piece of advice I would give you when cooking uh, in a Cajun manner, and it is the hardest thing for myself and for Chef Ramsey to do, is we've put rice on in two different dishes, and you've got to let it sit. Uh, that is something that we, we don't do. We carry around spoons with us all the time um, because you're tasting something and then add some seasoning here or there. And in the current, um, with these rice dishes, you don't need to look at it. You literally have to set it in there and let it sit for about 20 minutes and it'll be done. And then you can, uh, then you can taste it. And if you need to add something at that point, you do. But by removing the cover, um, it lets a lot of the, the steam out and it will stop the cooking process for some of the, the rice that's in there. But we're gonna do poor boys right now. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make up a, um, the spread that we will use for it. So we have a third of a cup of mayonnaise. If you so desire, you can use Miracle Whip. We're also going to use a little bit of shallot. Shallot is a uh, it's a member of the onion family, but it has a garlic taste to it. So we'll add just a little bit of that in there. Then we're going to add in some minced pickles. And then lastly, just a touch of some Louisiana hot sauce. It's about half a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. And then we're going to mix this up.
And what will happen is we're going to set this aside and then when we get everything cooked up and finished, this will actually be the spread uh, that will go onto our bread and will be a barrier between the bread and the rest of the sandwich. Next thing we're going to do is we got to get our shrimp ready. We have large 2125 shrimp. Uh, 2125 is not anything special. Uh, the size of the shrimp per pound is kind of what the number means. Uh, for one pound of shrimp at this size, you would get between 21 and 25. We have a little over a pound here. We're going to add some Cajun seasoning to it. We're going to toss, try to get every shrimp with this Cajun seasoning on it. Get our pan ready. some butter to our pan. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to our to our shrimp. I'm going to use a non-stick pan this time. Um, shrimp cook pretty quickly and they can adhere to the metal pans pretty quickly as well. Uh, so using a non-stick pan uh, just helps out. Again, this will be really, really quickly. And again, all you're looking for is this to kind of go from a translucent color to a white or opaque color. Um, it's kind of the opposite of what we've done with all of the uh, onions that we cook. The onions start off white and we want to get them to clear. This starts off kind of clear and we want to get it to white. When you start to see the color on the shrimp, again, it's only going to take two or three minutes. Now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to stop this cooking process. I'm just going to leave these in the pan and we're going to assemble our sandwich. So the bread that we have, we made a couple of days ago uh, here in-house. And first thing we're going to do is we put the spread on it. It doesn't take a lot, but what this spread does do is acts as a barrier because the shrimp and thing and the, the bread wants to absorb everything that's around it. And if you don't have like a good uh, barrier there, it actually will soak in and it'll make your bread soggy. So we're going to then take some shredded lettuce, fill that in. Some of our fresh sliced tomatoes. Thank you, sir. And then we're going to add in our shrimp that we just cooked. Now one of the things is it does not have to be shrimp. Um, you can add other dishes to it. Some people will do a fried po' boy. Um, some people will have, I've seen a crawfish po' boy. So it's just about anything and actually what we're going to do is we actually have a little bit more and we chopped up some chicken not too long ago that we made. And we're going to make a chicken po' boy as well. In the spread, one thing that you could do with the spread is if you made it earlier, put it back into the refrigerator, it turns a little bit back like mayonnaise and it's a little bit easier to spread. Again, we'll do our shredded lettuce first, followed by our tomatoes. 
And then we have some roasted chicken that we will add to it. But again, you can do fried something, you can do uh, slightly cooked, it doesn't have to be fried, sauteed. There are vegetable po' boys. So we're gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper to the top of them. Uh, and there we have our shrimp and roasted chicken po' boys. Well, folks, there's our Gulf Coast free pass. We've got jambalaya, just rice, kicked up a notch or five. We've got some red beans and rice, uh, easy recipe. All these recipes are at the end of the show. Uh, Mr. Lacey Slee will look after that. We've got smothered chicken, known to the southerners as etouffee. And then we've got some farm and some pond po' boys. So that's what it is. Uh, Come visit us next time. Remember here at EC3, we are self-supporting. Our kids earn their keep through our caterer program. If we can help you out, please let us know. It's ec3.catering at harden.kyschools.us. We appreciate you stopping to visit. We'll do this again next month. Until then, let's say la bon, tips, Y'all take care.